to you, swear the room, yeah, I got no ceiling, if we lay, let the day just pass us by, I might get to too much talking, I might have to tell you something, I like me better when I'm with you, I like me better when I'm with you, I knew from the first time, I stayed for a long time, cause I like me better when I like me better when I'm with you Thank you for tuning in to my non-conventional graduate recital. It really does mean a lot that you all would take the time out of your Saturdays to listen to a lecture recital. Um, today's recital will feature found instruments or objects that aren't typically used as instruments like bowls, boxes, cans, flower pots, and so on. The composers being featured today have composed instructional prompts rather than scores for the performer, me, to use undetermined instruments on. Found instruments are important for many reasons. For one, because they create such an interesting sound that can't be easily reproduced on conventional instruments. And two, one of the by, by far the biggest reason is they're easily accessible um, when at a time that we can't really have access to those instruments, for most of us anyways. So without further ado, here we go. <laughs> The first piece that I'm going to be playing today is Carl Bergstrom's memory piece. Carl Bergstrom currently resides in Aalborg, Denmark, where he teaches music therapy education at the University of Aalborg. He has created an intensive curriculum that involves around intuitive music and graphic notation. Intuitive music is a form of improvisation that focuses on instant creation when roles may or may not have been given. In the 70s, Bergstrom was involved with alternative music or music that does not really follow traditional aesthetics. The group he was a part of composed and played each other's compositions, improvised, public, published a magazine, and organized and performed at several large concerts. Bergstrom's works focus really on intuitive music, calling for the performer to create based on instructions. Um, a key compositional element for him is to develop a notation that enables the performer to focus on creativity in various ways. Most of his works call for complex soundscapes followed by changing themes and ideas. Um, Memory Piece 1 through 6 is a composition that focuses on a particular strategy of improvisation. Ed Serif, um, in his new article, A New Look on Improvisation, discusses the different strategies that can be used by solo performers as they travel through time. Performer A moves through time with really no sense of what has come before or what co will come after while performer B has a predetermined strategy on moving forwards and backwards through time, while performer C 
has directed awareness towards the present but not the whole. For this particular composition, I think Bergstrom calls for a more of a performer beat. One of the ideas Sarah writes about is this idea of retensive, protensive, or RP conception. Retensive is the ability to recall previous ideas or motives that were performed. Protensive refers to the ability to structurally move through time. This idea combines those two ideas to create a strategy that helps guide a performer through time, rather. Um, the performer will start off with a basic idea or thematic material, then transition into new material, and then recall old material. This can be seen as improvised binary form, or ABA. Memory piece three's instructions are, assign every new section to either remember back, take cue, reuse something, ad lib, or do something new or different. These instructions will probably not create a conventional small so song form design. The idea is to stay in the present with predetermined knowledge of one, how the performer will transition through sections, and two, how many sections will there be and what will be its contents. The way I have achieved this or realized this is by coming up with material and then assigning them to a form. The form to look for is similar to five-part Rondo form or ABACA. The only thing that has been thought out pretty much is the thematic material for the structure, not necessarily the contents itself. So without further ado, here is memory piece three.
The next piece is entitled Sonic Ceremony by Peter Jarvis. Peter Jarvis was a percussionist, drummer, conductor, composer, music copyist, print music editor, and college professor. He is director of new music at William Patterson University. He teaches percussion and chamber music at William Patterson University, Connecticut College, and Bergen Community College in New Jersey. He is associate director of the Composer's Concordance and has over 100 compositions. Sonic Ceremony was composed and dedicated to Peyton McDonald to perform during McDonald's project Sonic Divide. Sonic Divide, as McDonald says, is making music on the world's hardest bike route. It was a project that he took on in June of 2016 that led him on a 2,500 mile bike ride over 30 days from Antelope Wells, New Mexico to Banff, Alberta, Canada. His idea was to create a new kind of performance art, one that was performed in radically different conditions than a concert hall. The performances would include um, recordings that would be presented later on. The pieces McDonald performed during his project were all specifically composed for him. The pieces had to be quick to learn and easily performable on any instrument, manufactured or found. This particular score calls for five objects chosen by the performer. The staff notation gives instructions that Jarvis wants the performer to find objects of different pitches to produce melodic content. The bass note stays as an ostinato, while the top four pitches create melodies. The most important instruction in this piece is that Jarvis gives the performer the liberty of starting anywhere in the piece. Once the music reaches the end of the pages, or the double bar line, the performer must return back to the beginning to play up until the point in which they started. Through that time, Jarvis gives the liberty of per the performer playing whatever they want. The music in itself is not as interesting as the concept, which is to perform the piece with an instrument that's found in nature with little resources. For this, I have chosen a wooden shipping pallet that produces somewhat distinct sounds. This is in the spirit of McDonald's Sonic Divide, where he could not use his own instruments but had to find something on his route. In regard to the performance aspect, I have chosen to keep the wishes of Jarvis by not only playing what is written on the page, but also improvising thematic material in the style that it's written for. And in the spirit of Sonic Divide, I have hiked a trail with the goal of performing this at the end. After this piece will be a brief 10 minute intermission to do some listening and for everyone to take care of some personal business. Now that we are at the end of the trail, here is Sonic Ceremony.
And we're back. Thank you for sticking around. So the next piece I'll be performing today is called Love Letter by Liza Lim. Liza Lim is an Australian composer who focuses on collaborative and transcultural practices. Okay, let me get ready for this. Ideas of beauty, ecological connection, and a ritual transformation are ongoing concerns in her compositional work. Her four operas, The Oresteia, Moon Spirit Feasting, The Navigator, and Tree of Codes, and the major ensemble, Extinction Events, and Dawn Chorus, explore themes of desire, memory, and the uncanny. Her genre-crossing percussion ritual-slash-opera, Atlas of the Sky, is a work involving community participants that celebrates the emotional power and energy of dynamics of crowds. Love Letter, a postcard piece, was commissioned by the artistic director of Speak Percussion, Eugene Ugetti, for the group's 10th anniversary. Love Letter is inspired by a similar format of James Tinney's famous Postal Pieces, which is a series of pieces written on postcards. The idea of a postcard as a score is more of a prompt than an actual score. The instructions Lim gives are quite simple. Write a letter to your beloved. Note that this does not necessarily mean significant other. Assign a rhythmic information to each letter that includes silences, rhythmic layers, and then perform the work with subtle changes in timbre using different implements. One of the biggest challenges of Love Letter is being able to keep it interesting while not making the piece too long. The performer must think about how to create meaningful and expressive gestures and textures that can be developed so there is always some sort of changing soundscape, all while maintaining a realistic performing time. The way I have realized this piece is not by writing a letter, but a masostic poem. For those of you who are unfamiliar, a masostic poem is a poem in which a vertical word or phrase intersects a horizontal text. It is similar to an acrostic poem, except in a masostic poem, the spine is in the middle of the line. Each letter in punctuation has its assigned rhythmic value, whether that be actual rhythms, a quick gesture, or an implement change. The idea of this is to explore each sound that the frame drum can create while keeping the music interesting and engaging. Here is Love Letter, a postcard piece.
last piece I'll be performing today is Workbook by Danny Clay. Danny Clay is a composer whose work is deeply rooted in curiosity, collaboration, and the sheer joy of making things with people of all ages and levels of artistic experience. Working closely with artists, students, and community members alike, he builds worlds of inquiry, play, and perpetual discovery that integrate elements of sound, movement, theater, and visual design. Children's games, speculative systems, cognitive puzzles, invented notation, found objects, imaginary archives, repurposed media, micro-improvisations, and happy accidents all make frequent appearances in his projects. One of Clay's fundamental concepts is this idea called the art of play, or the question of when does creating music not feel like work, but play. It all boils down to a couple ideas. The first being making things by yourself for yourself. The idea of just creating just to create, whether that be, as Clay says, a video making funny faces, a painting of Hank Williams, or making a cube out of mirrors. Why not just make something you feel like making? Another idea of the art of play is making things with people for people, whether that be colleagues, family, or even primary school classroom. Creating isn't exclusive to those who know how to do it, but an, attack, an activity that everyone can enjoy, both in creating and receiving. Once you start collaborating with people for fun, then the work essentially turns into play um, and create an enjoyable experience. There are numerous articles that Clay writes that dive deep into that philosophy, but unfortunately, I don't have time to talk about that today. In 2016, in this like fashion, Clay developed 20 sound-based exercises called a workbook. The exercises in workbook are realizable by using any instrument and requires minimal music reading skills. Clay gives the option as well to perform these one-on-one -on -one, or one-by-one -one in a succession or even as a group, greatly diversifying the final results that can be achieved. The same Houston percussion group over the past four weeks have been working through Clay's workbook from home. Each performer chooses one of the 20 exercises each week and records them using any instruments that they choose. That could be a mixing bowl, a can, a makeshift drum set, or even a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. An image also is included to help represent the exercise performed. The recordings are then compiled weekly and available to share on the SHSU Percussion Studio page, so I encourage everyone to go check out that work. I have chosen to perform today two exercises, number 14 and number 16. For exercise 14, Clay writes the numbers 1 through 4. The first instructions are to assign those numbers to pitches and play them in strict time at 200 beats per minute. The second half of the instructions call for the same idea, but playing ad lib or without predetermination. So going back to the idea of improvisation. The second exercise, number 16, simply calls for the performer to write down a secret that no one knows, assign sounds to match syllables, and then destroy the secret. I did not have a large palette of sounds to work with, so I assigned each to pitches of the syllables. Now, before I play this last piece, again, I want to kind of thank everyone for tuning into my recital today. Origi originally, I was going to put on a chamber recital, but due to current circumstances, Dr. Lane and I brainstormed and came up with this idea. It allowed me to explore new lens of making music and allowed me to work on my editing skills. Also, this recital featured music from my friends, and I highly encourage going to check out their work. Their information is in the credits. Once again, thank you for tuning in, and here is Danny Clay's workbook, number 14 and 16.